On this episode of the New Home Construction Show, Lori Kehoe and Tony Bradbury from Habitat for Humanity of St. Charles County share a lot of great information with us about what they do, their mission, process, construction features, and they dispel a few of the most common myths about Habitat for Humanity. They even take us on a tour of both a recently completed home and one under construction. I'm Dan Asher with the New Home Construction Show, and our mission is to provide you with the tools and information to increase your knowledge of the home building process so that you can confidently take on the home building journey. Hi, welcome to the New Home Construction Show. I'm Dan Asher with the New Home Construction Advisors, and uh, today's a really great day for us. We have the opportunity to be on site at a Habitat for Humanity St. Charles uh, job site, and I'm here today with Lori Kehoe and Tony Bradbury, and uh, they're going to tell us a little bit about Habitat for Humanity, uh, dispel some common myths, talk about the uh, construction process, and also tell us a little bit about the different design components uh, they put into the homes and the different levels of, of quality that the, the purchasers um, get in their new home. That's so right. first of all, guys, just thanks for taking some time to be with us. It's a pleasure really to be here. It. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so right now, as I mentioned, we're in St. Charles, and this home is pretty much finished. Is that correct? This, it is. This okay. half of it, yes. Awesome. This is actually one of our duplex homes. So. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. So this is a duplex. So correct. It's two units side by side. Correct. Cool. Correct. Now, do you do a lot of duplexes? or? Uh, this is our second one we've done, mm -hmm. uh, and we plan on doing more. It's okay. the best use of the land. So yeah. this fit, a duplex fit this property okay. the best uh, because of subdividing it. Yeah. Uh, we couldn't get two single family homes, so we okay. we do this when we when we can. Yeah, no, so this land's a little more scarce, especially in St. Charles. Very you're, scarce. When you get it, yeah. you're trying to put more onto the property and get more use out of it. Right. Maxi maximize the space. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, very cool. Well, we'll kind of start off just uh, you know, from the beginning. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, Laura, if you just tell us a little Not bit about uh, Habitat for Humanity St. Charles. Sure. And kind of what it is and what it does. Sure. Well, our affiliate of Habitat for Humanity um, exclusively serves families that live and work in St. Charles County. And it was started by a group of Rotarians and community volunteers and this is actually our 87th home that we're standing in so we've been able to serve 87 families in those 22 years so we're really excited about that yeah um, and then as far as the habitat model goes um, our homeowners are selected through a really long process that starts with a credit application right down to a family application they do home visits and credit counseling and they go through this really long process. They have to perform 350 to 500 sweat equity hours towards the purchase of their home. And once all of that is completed and the home is finished and Tony's finished his part, they close on their home and they pay their monthly mortgage just like any other yeah. homeowner. Okay, so you said 350 to 500 hours and monthly mortgage. So you know, one of it, the common myths is... That's, so that's yeah. in sweat equity towards yeah. the purchase. So wow. they are swinging a hammer next to the volunteers who are actually building their home. Part of their sweat equity hours is financial literacy training, um, basic homeowner training programs that Tony and, and our homeowner support manager put together okay. so that they can learn how to be a homeowner because many of them have never lived outside of an apartment. Yeah, outside so you're not just giving yeah. them a, a home, you're teaching them how to have a successful home purchasing experience, right. how to budget for That's the mortgage right. and, and plan for it and, and all that good stuff. That's right. And then, yeah. and then maintain and care for the home. Yeah. So. Okay. Oh yeah, okay, cool. So they're also learning best practices when it's spring or winter right. and the stuff that maybe they've been renting they've never worried about. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, because some of them have never had to change a furnace filter okay. or smoke detector batteries or yeah. why do you disconnect the garden hose in the winter time. Yeah. So those are things we go through with them. They've also been part of the home building, so they know what's behind the drywall, what's under the floors, yeah. what's under the concrete. So they see yeah. all that and so they learn. If, if someone goes and buys a new home in a new neighborhood traditionally, they're not learning all that. No, Correct. at all. So really, your home buyers are getting a full-on experience about how the homes are built. And that's the goal is, as Tony mentioned, not only to sell them a house, but to sell them a home that's affordable to them, yeah. that they will then know how to care for because it's a 30-year commitment, as yeah. we know, when people purchase a home. Yeah. And we want them to be able to, to live in that house successfully okay. and, and to become a part of the neighborhood that they're in. So Cool. And yeah. a little bit of pride. I mean, they built this house, so they were right. part of it. So Yeah. Um, yeah. Blood, sweat, and tears went into it. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, a lot. It's yeah. called sweat equity for sometimes, yeah. so. sometimes more tears. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. I mean, that's anybody building a home is right. sometimes going to have a few tears right. in the garage. Absolutely. So all those hours, 
Do those typically occur during the, the construction window? Or are they usually before? Do they come a little bit after? Or how does that last? So when a family is selected, um, it's about six to eight months from the time that they're selected until the time that their home is completed. Yeah. And so their sweat equity hours can be on the job site, working on their home, could be on another partner family's home, working in their home. Okay. They could be um, working in our restore. Mm -hmm. And um, and then again, there's a lot of hours that are taken up by the, the financial literacy program that they go through, as yeah. well as the training that, that Tony puts them through as That's well. pretty so. cool. So they might work on other homes. So it's almost a community. Right. Okay. Hey, I worked on your home, you worked on mine, sometimes. It really does become community. The person that is moving into this house will meet their new neighbors in the next month or so, oh. and they will get to know each other really well. And yeah. it really is, community is a great word for it. And that was pretty much how Habitat was found at, okay. was community building, so. Cool. Yeah, so started, awesome. started yeah. on one and moved to the next, and yeah. the community helped to build those homes yeah. right. as they grew. So, yeah, that's great. So let's just touch in on one of the, the common myths uh, yes. that people hear. Just, you kind of just talked about, you got all these hours the home buyer's putting into the home, and you mentioned mortgage, right. but also getting a traditional mortgage. Can you kind of touch on dispelling the myth that you know, Habitat for Humanity gives homes away? And that is our most common myth that we go through is people think that we give away free homes to people who can't afford to buy them. When in reality, our homeowners go through a much more strict process than anyone would buying uh, conventionally out of the community. So as they go through this process, they perform their sweat equity towards the purchase. Once they close on their home, they pay their monthly mortgage to the bank just like everyone else does. Yeah. Um, so it really is a home buyer program, okay. not, a, not a home giveaway program. Yeah. So we love to say that the only thing that we give away is an opportunity. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. great. So. Um, well, before we kind of dive into the construction process and practices, yeah. Um, I want to talk first about how, how can people get involved? What are a few ways that people can volunteer? Well, anybody who's interested in volunteering can go to our website, hfhvolunteer.org. Mm -hmm. um, that is our online volunteer schedule. We are in constant need of volunteers at our ReStore on the job site. Um, those dates are available two weeks out. We do hold some um, of those dates closed for our groups, obviously, for our sponsor groups and things like that. Um, you can always email us at team at habitatstcharles.org. That gets you to anybody on our engagement team if you have any interest in getting involved because there's so many different ways that you can be involved with Habitat, even if swinging a hammer is not your thing. So, Very cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So yeah. Someone's scared to put on a hard hat and climb right. a ladder. There, there's other ways. There's lots of yeah. ways to be involved. We need their own, That's whatever right. their individual talents are. Exactly. Probably a way to we, have a, we have a place for everyone at Habitat cool. St. Charles. Yeah. Um, our volunteers do have to be 16 to be on the job okay. site, so there yeah. is that age restriction for insurance yeah. purposes. That makes sense. But <laughs> even, even some of the younger groups, we do everything yeah. we can to try to help them find a way okay. that they can support Habitat if they're interested in doing so. Yeah. Sometimes just a third-party fundraiser and things like that. Yeah. Um, we are always, always, always working in the community to yeah. try to raise awareness because we believe that when people understand what we do, that they'll love it as much as we do. It's awesome. And you said, I want to point out Habitat for Humanity St. Charles is where we're at today. That's right. Because another common myth is people think all the affiliates are associated. And granted, they're all wonderful all affiliate organizations, the same but they mission. want to volunteer with you. That's right. So all serving the same great mission. Um, we just exclusively serve families that live or work in St. Charles County. Okay. So cool. our, our neighboring county, again, serves their same great mission. Yeah. They serve families that exclusively live and work in St. Louis okay. County. So. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. A lot of people probably don't know that. Absolutely. And yeah. another another uh, piece to that is Habitat International yeah. um, is its own entity as well. They're okay. actually raising funds to build homes internationally. Wow. And so that's another kind of point of confusion, if you will, that, yeah. well, I've been donating to Habitat for years. If you yeah. want to donate locally, yeah. hope donating to International is not the way to do yeah. that. But again, yeah. same great mission, just a different location. Yeah. All, all great causes. So a lot of people like that grassroots uh, feeling of right. helping their you know their neighbors, Absolutely. the people in their local community. It you know, may be both. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Tony becomes awesome. friends with all the neighbors. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. he's the one that spends all the time out here. So Yeah, awesome. Uh, speaking of uh, getting to the neighbors on site, what does the construction process on site look like uh, when you're building these homes? Uh, well, I mean, when we come into a, an area, we make a big impact. And so first thing we do is we go in and we meet the neighbors. We let them know what's going on, what we're doing. Um, we have the volunteer days. We could have 15 to 20 you know, people out on the job site. And so you put 15 to 20 people out hammer in and yeah. it it uh it makes an impact but it's for a short period of time yeah and this is the end result yeah. uh, we uh when the volunteers come out in the morning uh we'll do a morning circle we'll, we'll greet them 
Uh, we'll discuss um, a little bit about Habitat, kind of what Lori just did. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about our restore, a little bit about the partnership, um, and then the homes, and then we'll go over the task for the day, cool. uh, what our job if we're framing, drywall and painting. Yeah. Um, and we'll give some instruction and go over some safety, yeah. and then we'll get started for the day. Um, we do a lot of hands-on, and you, you, were, you were asking how people could get involved. Yeah. Uh, every day I get people out that may have never held a hammer or okay. a paintbrush, and we teach them. By the end of the day, they they can help you know frame that wall. Yeah. They, they've installed those. It's really dry. exciting. Yeah. Um, or put up siding. So many people yeah. are. are so happy when they leave, they're like, I've never put up siding and now I know how to, you know? And yeah. um, I don't know if they're gonna go inside a whole house, but <laughs> but they definitely have some skills, you know, they've learned yeah. some skills and stuff by doing it. That's so awesome. it's it's real fun to be able to teach people yeah. that part of it too. Cool. Um, so, uh, and then, um, you know, usually about an eight hour build day. And yeah. it's hard to judge, you know, what you're gonna get done because you never know the level of skill that the group's gonna have. Yeah. Sometimes people, need more instruction, you know, and, and sometimes they don't. So. It's something that I love to point out is we're building new construction homes yeah. and doing remodels with volunteer labor. Yeah. So our construction manager and his core volunteer groups are getting a group of 15 people every yeah. single day who may have zero construction yeah. knowledge whatsoever. So Tony uses all of his patience and all of his <laughs> leadership skills to take those people yeah. and show them exactly what it is that they need to do. And I will tell you, quality in this construction is one of his main priorities. Yeah. He's not hesitant to say, okay, you guys, that was a really great yeah. effort, but we're gonna back those out and start yeah. over because it doesn't look exactly like it's supposed to. Yeah. Which yeah. we're all really, really <laughs> pleased with the way that Tony is willing to work with people like yeah. that. Cool. It does take a unique kind of individual to do that kind of work with people. Oh, sure. Leaders, so, so if someone shows up and their, their tool belt's a little too shiny, <laughs> you might be doing a little more explaining that day. So, sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes you can get the guys the the seasoned yeah. uh, construction and um, still need to put the brakes on them a little bit <laughs> yeah, to bring that quality in. So yeah. uh, that's it's it's too easy to do it right the first time yeah. and make it look nice. So um, someone made a comment. Well, it's just a volunteer built that house. Yeah, you know, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. You know, we're here volunteering if if the screws are in the drywall or not or this yeah. or that. And it's like. No, it does. It, yeah. This is someone's home, yeah. so uh, we, you know, we make it the best yeah. we can, and um, we, we, we have third-party inspectors, and some of them, um, not to pat myself on the yeah. back or anything, but they've yeah. come out and said these are some of the best constructed homes they've inspected. Yeah, and so it, it's nice to hear that feedback yeah. from from those right. parties. Yeah, so I mean, quality is top priority. Absolutely. Yeah, so are being built. Just yeah. because we build simple, decent, and affordable yeah. does not mean that we build cheap. Yeah, there are awesome. no corners cut. So, yeah. and I'll let okay. Tony talk more about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. anything else you quality wise? Is that yeah. Oh uh, no, I mean we we do a lot of uh, partnerships with local vendors. Uh, we try to we try to support our community when we're purchasing. Um, we you know our flooring comes from a local vendor. Uh, these cabinets came from the Missouri Vocational Enterprise, so they're built right here in Missouri. Um, we do, uh, you know, part, like I said, we partner with different uh, contractors, to the roofing contractors, the yeah. foundation contractors. There are things that we sell out uh, because you have to be licensed and bonded, you know, to do that type of work. Yeah. Uh, but we teach framing, we teach um, insulating, and it sounds funny to teach the insulating, but there's specific ways that we insulate and things we do. Um, we drywall, painting, laying sod, um, yeah. installing doors and cabinets. Uh, yeah. So they get to learn all those aspects of the house, the volunteers yeah. when, when we're building. Okay, um, cool. What do you subcontract out? Go ahead. Uh, we, well, it's, uh, we sub out our foundation, okay. our flat work. Uh, we sub out our three mechanicals. Uh, on the homes that we do garages, we'll sub out the garage doors. Okay. Um, and then uh, our roofing. Uh, okay. because we want our roofs installed correctly yeah. um, and safely. And so uh, we'll have a contractor come in and do that part for us. Um, and sometimes that's a gift in kind, and yeah. most of the time those are items that we pay for. Okay. Right. Um, then we used to um, sub out our taping, okay. uh, but recently we partnered with uh, the, local, the District Council 58, the Taper Painters Union, and they come in and tape our homes as part of their apprenticeship program. Yeah. And so the savings, uh, cost-wise, with that, we're able to upgrade our flooring 
to a, a, a waterproof flooring so that it's more sustainable for the homeowner. Okay. Um, and that's some that's something else we do in our building is yeah. ways we can make the house more sustainable. Okay, cool. So sustainability is important. Uh, what are some other very, specs that yep. you know you put into these homes that you, know, you mentioned insulation, sustainability? Right. So uh, Laura said we should build simple, decent, affordable. Um, and so, like she said, we don't cut any corners, but we don't do anything cheap. Uh, we just don't do all the bells and whistles that a typical builder will do. Um, you know, these are a nice cabinet, but they're a flat panel cabinet. Mm -hmm. We don't install dishwashers. We don't install garbage disposals. When we have garages, we don't install uh, garage door openers. But we set up those items for it. We left right. the space for a garage, for a uh, sorry for a dishwasher. We installed the wiring for a garbage disposal and the dishwasher because those are items that could be hazardous if the homeowner tried to do that on the, their own. So we've put those items in, um, and they can upgrade and put the appliances in. Okay. Um, cool. We, uh, you know, we won't do shutters. We won't do uh, different things um, on the exterior of the home. Um, so after the simple, decent, affordable, we do energy efficient homes. Okay. Um, all of our exterior walls are two by six framed walls wow. on two foot center. Okay. And it sounds like overkill, but you can get more insulation and less wood in that wall, the better energy efficient that wall is going to be. Yeah. Um, through a partnership with Dow Manufacturing and Habitat, uh, they provide blue board insulation, okay. uh, foam, foam insulation, house wrap, and spray foam. Okay. And so on the outsides of our homes, we put that. Uh, insulation board from footing to roof line. Okay. It's taped, it's wrapped with house wrap. On the insides, we take that foam and caulk sealants and we caulk every, um, every single layer. So like where the foundation meets the sill plate, the sill plate meets the band board, the band board meets the subfloor. You know, kind of like the elbows connected to the, yeah. <laughs> to the arm bone. But, uh, so we caulk every one of those joints all yeah. the way up yeah. to make that wall more airtight uh, and better insulated. And with the foam board and the R19 bat insulation in the wall and the sheeting, we get an R25 value wow. in our outside wall. Yeah. We blow uh, an R38 in our attic. Before we did that, we went in and cocooned around every one of the ceiling penetrations yeah. with the spray foam from Dow. Yeah. And um, it not only insulates those items, but it also seals off any extra or any possible air leaks. Okay. Um, our, all of our outlets, we go through and foam and caulk the, every penetration inside of one of those. Yeah. When we do our insulation, we do a grade one. So everything is, and that means everything is cut around every outlet, every pipe, every wire, and it's tucked and set in place, not shoved and compressed because when you compress insulation, you lose its its yeah. uh, ability to insulate, okay. and um, it's you know it's pointless in that area. So if there was a pipe running through and you put that insulation over, you've created a cold spot, a void behind. Okay. Um, so we we cut around all that, and we have a green inspector come in to inspect our homes, and those are items that they they look at and, and go over. Yeah. Um, so that's a little bit. We use all high energy uh, appliances like our water heater. We are our, our uh, furnace and air conditioner. Uh, we install all LED lighting, uh, low consumption toilets. Uh, yeah. So we've we've gone through and planned ahead of uh, time what we could make and put in that home to make that home more yeah. um, energy efficient, to make yeah. it more sustainable. Yeah. So when people say, "Oh, that's a habitat home that was yeah. built by volunteers," yeah. this is the message that we want to get out to people: is yeah. come and see one of these homes and see the work that is being done, yeah. because these are beautiful homes and yeah. again our partner families are working really really hard to be able to purchase those homes yeah. and so getting our the word of our mission out is is a huge part of what we what we need to do to yeah. keep that grassroots movement yeah that's incredible it's two by six walls you know you don't get that in most new neighborhoods right you know no traditional right traditional neighborhoods yeah. in, as as energy codes uh, become more strict you'll see some some of those items yeah. flown into the the building industry um, but we're proactive on it, yeah. and we do it because of our homeowners. Yeah, you know, we want we want to provide that that affordable home for them, and that's yeah. just part of it. Um, and it doesn't cost um, a whole heck of a lot more to do a lot of that that stuff. The yeah. blue board is a is a high price item, yeah. um, and you know partnering with Dow makes that possible that yeah. we can we can Very do that. Cool. But um, the caulking, the ceiling, the insulating, just yeah. installing insulation correctly yeah. goes a long way. Yeah. I walk in a lot of homes and they don't even have the band boards around the top yeah. of the foundation insulated and they're losing so much 
heat and cooling through that, so much energy, yeah. um, and it's just a waste. And one of the things, as, as being green is one of our priorities as well, the leftover cut pieces of blue board are then cut to fill in that floor joist void, yeah. yep. um, wow. three layers deep and, and spray foamed in. So yeah. they're getting an R15 value just in the, in the floor joist cavities alone. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. things that really small details yeah. that you can pay attention to, to really make a house sustainable for yeah. our partner families. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Header, door headers, we push our headers to the outside yeah. and on that two by six wall, we're able to foam and we seal around our door headers. We caulk the sheeting to, yeah. the, to the studs around yeah. all the openings, the door, the window openings. Um, and you don't see that in typical yeah. construction. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that yeah. would just be awesome. a solid wood. And if you took a thermal gun, you would see the loss of energy through that door header or that yeah. window header. Wow. So, so uh, there's a lot that goes into these homes. Yeah. And uh, one other thing, and we're going to walk around in a minute. Uh, well, one thing that I noticed right when I walked in here was, was wide hallways. We started talking about something that you're doing somewhat more common now, universal design. If you can talk about universal design a little bit and how you're incorporating those into your homes yeah. and also how that you know, helps the, your, your partner families. Yeah, Tony, if you want to. Yeah, um, so we got into it uh, a couple years ago with one of our families that was selected. They had an immediate need for some of those features. Um, and universal design kind of takes some of the ADA requirement uh, it takes what they call common sense building practices and what they call aging in place building practices and it, it takes a lot of those lumps together and uh, they call it universal design. So like the zero entrance when you came in, there's no step yeah. from the curb all the way into the house. It makes that home more accessible by anyone. Someone in a wheelchair, a walker, any type of walking disability uh, can access this home. Um, the wider hallways, we do a standard four foot wide hallway with the turned hallway at five foot with the five foot radius in there. Um, our bathrooms are uh, oversized with a five foot turn radius. There's space between the, the vanity and the stool to do a transfer from a chair if need be. Um, we do three foot wide doorways. Okay. Um, all of our door handles are lever handle. We did, we redesigned our kitchen and do an open galley kitchen okay. so that it's more accessible. And the big thing in here, not only just being more accessible, but there's more storage, lower storage. Yeah. So okay. if you were in a wheelchair or um, vertically challenged, you would have that extra yeah. cabinet space to work with. Now you, you could take it another step forward and, or further, and lower these workspaces. Yeah. You could do a lower countertop, lower the sink. And we've done those on immediate needs. Mm -hmm. um, but those are features and items that could be done later yeah. without redoing a whole lot. Yeah. If you had to move a wall and open, open doorways and make that hallway wider, you're dealing with electric and plumbing, potentially HVAC, then you're redoing your flooring. So it's a lot of money to go in and remodel a home um, to make it universal design. And a few of those features that are really simple to do in the construction process is lowering the light switches and raising the outlets. Okay. Right. Um, and then installing backer board in the bathroom yeah. behind at, so that any future grab bars that can be installed, you, they don't have to find a stud and they, they yeah. can put it exactly where they need it. Yeah. So some of those features yeah. that are now incorporated into all of our construction. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't make the home look institutionalized. There's yeah. not these big silver grab bars. There's not a handicap ramp built to the front door. Um, that's part of that universal design and it's planning ahead of time yeah. before you've even dug that foundation What do you want in that home? What yeah. features? How do you want that to sit? How do you want that to be placed? And so all of it is planning and there is an added added expense, but it's not The extreme what people think yeah. it would be. Yes, it does cost a couple dollars more to put a bigger door in It does cost more to put bigger showers in um, but if you plan ahead, it doesn't cost any more to take that scrap lumber and yeah. put it inside of the wall to have yeah. that backing. Right. Yeah. It doesn't cost that much more to go to a lever door handle than a round knob. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So the universal design you know, also helps them to age in place. Absolutely. That's one important thing about universal design is uh, even if you don't have the need tomorrow for it, right. you know, if you stay in your home for 30 years or That's right. 15 years in, in a lot of situations, you're going to need that down the road. So it sounds like you're, you're giving them the, the framework so you're able to do that long term. Correct. You know, they have to, you're giving them the, the, the sticks or bricks are built that way. They need to switch out cabinets 15 years from now, a lot easier to do. Absolutely. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Absolutely. Yeah, well, that's awesome. And, you know, so there's one other thing people always bring up when you hear about Habitat for Humanity. That's Jimmy Carter. So what's <laughs> the story with Jimmy Carter and Habitat <laughs> for Humanity? Well, rumor has 
recognize that the Jimmy Carter yeah. founded the organization in 1976, when in fact that is not true. Yeah. He is just our most famous volunteer who is still well into his 90s out yeah. swinging hammers alongside okay. volunteers. Yeah. Um, he and Rosalind Carter both are still out swinging hammers, and we do love them for being our most famous volunteers. That's awesome. He so, probably gets a kick out of it. He does. They, they do um, a large program around the nation that is the, the Jimmy and Rosalind Carter built. Okay. So it's yeah. it's really special to them. He's awesome. kept it close to his heart for his entire yeah. adult life. So. I think that's yeah. great. What, Wonderful. A, what a great leader. Yes, he is. Yeah. Well, so let's go take a look around uh, this home and show us you know, some of the things you've talked about and kind of show us what that looks like in, in real life. Okay. Right. Wonderful. Great. Thank you. So this is the two by six construction we were talking about earlier. We do them on a two foot center. So you can imagine this full of cat, this cavity full of insulation, um, and then up against the sheeting. That grade one, they also call it a six surface touch. So you would be touching all six surfaces of this cavity after the drywall is put on, um, and so that way that insulation can open up and do what it's what it's intended to. And so if there was a wire running across here or a pipe we cut around each one of those. We'd cut around the outlets and stuff. Um, out here, this is the garage. We don't typically build garages because again, we do the simple, decent, affordable. But when the municipalities we build in require uh, by different building code, we'll do a garage. Uh, this is an oversized one car garage and it fit the design and flow of the neighborhood. So this is what we chose to go with. Um, this is our zero entry. So you can see there's no step coming into the house. Um, it's just a transition. This door can also be changed out to a ADA sill if need be. Uh, right now, someone could transition over it easily, but uh, you could do a different sill coming into the house. This is the luxury vinyl floor that we were talking about. It's a waterproof flooring. It's all clicked together laminate. And the homeowners, we try to let them pick as many of the colors as we can, and so um, they, they got to choose from about eight different types of flooring colors, uh, the cabinet colors, countertop colors, uh, siding colors on the outside. And then again, we have the three foot wide doorways. Um, so everything from our entry all the way through to the bathroom are three foot wide doorways. As you come in, this be the living room of the home, breakfast area, and then the galley kitchen that we talked about. These are the cabinets. They're a standard flat panel door cabinet. They do a uh, plywood drawers dovetail. Um, and again, this is through the Missouri Vocational Enterprise. Um, and so they, they're learning a skill and a trade and we, we get a quality cabinet in the end that we purchase from them. And then we instruct volunteers and uh, work with different volunteers and do all the installation of it. Uh, we install the, the cabinets, the countertops. We install all the trim, the window sills. Uh, we set all the doors. We set all the exterior doors. Uh, we, set, we set the windows. Uh, we teach, you know, the homeowner, she got to set the windows in her own house. So she was really excited about that. Uh, you can see we have the oversized hallway that we talked about. And then that goes into the bedroom doorways. Our home is a 1,220 square foot, three bedroom, one bathroom ranch style home. We've worked over the last couple of years to simplify the floor plan to save construction cost. Um, down, you know, this includes lumber cost, your, your drywall cost to make more things efficient. Uh, so there's not a lot of waste uh, when, we, when we build through the homes. Some of the things you can't see, part of the energy efficiency that we do are cold air returns. Inside here, there's metal ductwork, and everything is taped or we use a duct mastic to seal up every hole. And people ask, well, why? It's inside the house. Where's the air going to go? Well, it would leak inside the walls, which is still inside the home, but it's not letting that equipment run properly. And so by sealing all that, uh, the joints and everything, it'll, it'll help that equipment flow better and perform better. So you can see in, these are two of the back bedrooms.
And then this is the bathroom. Again, we have the vanity. And if need be, this could be changed out so that you, if you were in a wheelchair, you could get underneath the vanity to a roll under. And then the oversized bathroom with the area to have a transition to the toilet. And we talked inside these walls, all the way around here is solid backing. And then we do a vertical backing down the sides of the shower, tub shower unit, so that you can place a grab bar anywhere in this area and there's going to be a solid backing to it. Now this, this is a standard tub shower. This could be changed out to a roll-in shower. It has the depth, the width is already there. Yes, it would be a little bit of work, but you wouldn't have to move any walls and you wouldn't have to change the plumbing. You could adapt to what's there and they could have a, a shower that's easily to access. And then the wider hallway we talked about with the turn radius coming into the master. And then this would be the master bedroom. We don't typically do basements, but when we have the funding for it, we will, or the need. We'll put it in, it allows for extra storage, for storm shelter, and then for family expansion. Is we install a radon mitigation system. It's something that we're just proactive on. We, we take so much time to seal these houses up and make them airtight to make them more efficient that if there is gases, harmful gases in the home, then they're not going to be able to escape. And so by putting the radon mitigation in, uh, that is taking care of that, is, that issue, that problem. Uh, we partner with a local company, Quackers Waterproofing, um, and they come in and install this before we pour the floors, before we do any drywall. Everything's concealed upstairs in the walls and the attic so that it's not attached to the outside of the home. This is our ground roof that we do. And then the egress. These are items that you can put in for a few hundred dollars that would cost a couple thousand dollars to do later on. This is an $800 to $900 option to put this window in when we pour this foundation. But it's a $5,000 to $6,000 option to put it in later on after the home is already built. If the family needed to have that area for the family expansion, you know, another child's bedroom or something. And then our equipment that we talked about earlier, uh, we use high efficiency furnace and air conditioning. It's all directed outside. This unit's a 96% efficient uh, unit. And we teach them, you know, the importance of changing that furnace filter, um, you know, how to shut off the gas in, in, in case of an emergency, how to shut off the water in case of an emergency. Um, so we teach them all those, those items. You can see the duct mastic and stuff around all the joints that we talked about a moment ago, um, sealing every penetration that would be around this unit so that it doesn't leak any air. And then we have water heater. We do a power vent water heater. It's a high efficiency water heater. And we teach them how to, how to operate this unit. Again, with the gas and the water shutoffs. And then we have the rough, or the plumbing for the washer and dryer connections. Um, we just do a simple shelf for storage. And then dryer vent run into the outside. And then the last thing we have down here really is the sump pit um, to make sure that the, the basement stays nice and dry, that no ground moisture comes up. And Lori had spoken earlier about the using the scraps uh, to insulate our band boards with. And so we have the three layers that are up here and then we do a, a quick caulk around that just to give it a little airtight seal. And any penetration going out through the band board, plumbing, electrical, is all caulked, sealed, foamed uh, to make it airtight. So with this home, 
being the duplex, we have a whole other side that we're working on right now. This side's completed, and the family that we selected for this build will be completing the, the other side of the duplex. So we have some volunteers working over there, and let's go take a look and see what they're doing. So this is the other half of our duplex. Uh, group of volunteers behind me are part of our Wednesday crew, a group of guys that come out every Wednesday and help us build. Some of them come back throughout the week and help us as crew leaders with big volunteer groups. So let's go inside and see what they're doing. This would be the living room, just like the house next door that we were walking through. They're cutting some fire drywall for fire blocking. We do the party wall, so it's the shared wall between the two homes. They're finishing up the drywall in this room on the party wall. As you can see, that drywall runs all the way from top of foundation all the way up to the roof line. And then on the roof line, we have fire tree and plywood. It comes back four feet. I wonder if we'd be on the party wall. And then everything is filled, taped, or foam filled with the fire ceiling. So a lot of times, the, we talked about our restore earlier, a lot of times people have the belief that the items they donate to the restore, we use in the construction of the home. And it's not possible because we need to use new materials um, and we have to have that supply of that material. So our restore though is really important to us. We sell new and used building materials, furniture, appliances, lawn and garden. I joke around and say pretty much anything in your home that you don't eat or wear, we'll, we'll sell or we'll recycle it. And uh, we take in those donations um, throughout the week. If they're too large of a donation, we do have the ability to come pick them up and you can schedule online pickups um, as long as you're in St. Charles County or the area. Uh, our store is in St. Peter's. We're up behind Mid Rivers Mall uh, off Sumandi Drive. We're in the same building that Bayou City Furniture is in. And we're open Wednesday through Saturday, 10 to 6. Uh, and on Tuesdays from 10 to 3, we take donations and we'll do donation pickups. So you can, again, you can get online and schedule a pickup or you can call into the store and schedule a pickup. Uh, but the the restore is really important because it helps fund the affiliate and that allows more money to be directed into the builds of the homes. That was awesome. Thank you so much for, for showing us around this home. I'm sure the homeowners are, are super excited to move in. Yes. Yeah, very cool. We're excited for it. So. this home. Absolutely. A lot of thought and care and time and effort. Absolutely. Yeah. So cool. Well, if, so if someone wants to connect mm -hmm. with you uh, yes. for a variety of reasons, you know, hopefully to volunteer. Absolutely. Let's just say they want to follow you, you know, online. How do people go about doing that? Absolutely. You can find us on our website, which is www.habitatstcharles.org, um, or you can find us on Facebook at Habitat St. Charles. Okay. Awesome. Well, be sure to hop online and follow Habitat for Humanity St. Charles and thanks again for your time today. Uh, Thank really you. really appreciate it. I know everybody watching this uh, got to learn a lot today that they probably didn't already know and uh, hopefully we'll see you on a Habitat for Humanity St. Charles job site really soon.